So welcome back to the lab where I've got my NMR receiver sprawled out on the floor here and I intend to explain a little bit more about the details about how this thing operates. Now there's been a lot of uh, viewer interest in this stuff. A number of people have written to me with questions about the details of the circuit since they are interested in um, conducting some NMR experiments for themselves or taking things further in a number of directions. And I think that's a really good really good ambition for um, someone who's conquered some or most of the normal electronics things like winding coils and uh, you know wiring up op amps and if, if you can make an amplifier circuit that reliably does exactly what you thought it was going to do then this is the kind of project this is a really good ambitious one to take on like if if it's your first amplifier it's probably not a good project for that because it is pretty tricky the, there's really high gains involved and a, a lot of opportunities for things not being stable and uh not you know and things being out of tune and, and you don't know why and so it's not i don't want to discourage anyone that that it's, it's it's not too hard of a project or anything like that it's just that uh it, it is ambitious and it took me a lot of tries to get this really going going well so anyways um so I've got uh, obviously the coil here, and this is just an off-the-shelf bobbin of uh, copper wire stock, and um, I had used half of it for other stuff, and I decided I'll just commit it, the rest of it, to this project. And uh, it took a fall, I think, before it was in this roll, uh, so you can actually see the the windings exposed there to get the get a sense of the density, the, the size of the wire, and so on. I don't know exactly what it was. It didn't have a label. <clears throat> I got it at a surplus store or something like that, unlabeled, you know, junk. But uh, well, good, good, solid wire. But um, anyways, that goes through this cable, which is haphazardly spooled up on here, and um, goes into this receiver over here. Now um, the two feet or so. Uh, this is coax because the output on this thing is a capacitive transducer, also coax, and it has to be shielded all the way around because the electric field can aggress the input. It's the one, the first important aggressor to deal with. So it looks like we're going to be sharing the space with the cat. I think that's okay. I don't think he's going to interfere with the magnetic fields or, or anything like that. Okay, so... Uh, Here's the uh, circuit here. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to try and show you this in a way where it's stable, so you might be able to pause the video if you're interested in this stuff. And I'm going to warn you that um, I actually built this circuit completely improv, like it was never drawn. I've recovered this from memory, and uh, you may be able to see that there are some gaps here. So um, the basic idea is that I've got a coil that I need to pump a bunch of current through using a big powerful battery and let that happen for a few seconds and then flip over a switch to close that coil across an amplifier and uh, whoops there's a cat um, yeah okay and so the, the coil has its own natural ring down right it's been carrying a bunch of current and you're suddenly interrupting that current and there's stray capacitances and it's an inductor and you know its own its own distributed elements are, are going to have to discharge their energy and so it's really important that you have not just a, the, the big tuning capacitor to absorb that jolt but also um you need, and I don't have them drawn here, some suppressor diodes and stuff, and a DC path to ground, because you want this cap to start off with zero charge when you, uh, when you slam the coil across it. And, um, okay, and so this LC resonator forms a Q of about 8. Um, I, that's a c computed value. I didn't measure, I didn't measure that. I, I know the response of that LC is about a Q of 10. That's what I had estimated from seeing it on the scope but i hadn't actually really measured it so uh you know it, it's computed as 8.5 um okay so uh what else is noteworthy there i think that's good that's the basics of the, the you know the big coarse elements if we move into the amplifier here it's just gain stages 
Um, and I've taken advantage of every opportunity to put a corner in at the, uh, the frequency of interest. And um, I have the gains here as 10. Uh, that's where I started. I had three gain stages. I forget whether it was non-inverting, inverting, non-inverting. Like, I, I don't know. But it was some mix of inverting and non-inverting gain stages. Three of them. And the final one, which I also don't have drawn here very well, was just a unity gain inverting amp. So I could pick the polarity of the output or even use differential. And only one of those three options worked. One of the single endeds worked. The other two uh, were unstable. They would cause the, the amp to whine. And so I, and I actually had to put, had to keep putting resistors across the ones here to get the gain up and up. And it, they, they were probably something like 30 per stage by the time it, I was through with it. So um, that's the rundown on that. Uh, in terms of computing the frequencies of interest, well, let's start with the coil specs. So uh, 56 ohm coil, 34 millihenry, and um, the capacitor was 0.15 microfarads. I, I actually trimmed that using some 220 puffs and stuff to get it exactly dead on, but it's pretty close to 0.15 microfarads. And uh, that's, that's why I've drawn this as a variable. You'll have to figure that out. And so what frequency is that? Well, the gyromagnetic ratio of the proton is 42.58 megahertz per Tesla. And so you'll have to find out what your local magnetic field strength is. Uh, where I am, it's about 53 micro Tesla. Uh, I found out that number more exactly when I embarked on this, but it, this gives me about 2210 hertz where I am. And uh, yeah, and the Q is eight and a half. Now, uh, a point I want to make is that um, if you have a Q of an eight and a half, that is like if the tuned response to a transient is just a like it's not a perceptible tone. It's it's well well below the where a human's going to perceive a ring. Like if we're talking about the NMR ring down times. Which are, which are on the order of many seconds, it's something like a tuning fork or, a, you know, some high Q mechanical oscillator that uh, it's, it's in the thousands, right? It uh, lasts a long, long time, the, the ring. So, and, and that's what we're looking for. And it's quite easy. In fact, it's impossible to mistake the, tune, the, the tuning of this or the tuning of the transducer uh, for, um, for the signal you're after. So it really is quite clear. And when you're grappling with these numbers, for yourself, you'll obviously be able to, to, to know what's going on, but, uh, that's just the basics. And, um, what else? So on the transducer front, I found a piezo with, uh, the, the lowest resonance, its main resonance is at, um, exactly the frequency of interest. Uh, I think they're, they're rated as 2.2. Uh, I bought them on DigiKey. Maybe they're just two kilohertz, but there's quite a variance. So I binned one. I picked picked one out that's uh, that was exactly perfect for the task at hand. And then I'm also driving it through uh, some resistor. I don't think it was 220. That's where I started, but I think I dropped it down to 47 or something like that. And that's too because this is a big capacitor too. The the piezo is a big capacitor. You can cut off the the higher resonances or to roll them off a little bit, right? So um, and, and so playing with that is great. And it also means your amp isn't strained too hard, uh, in worst case scenario. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a, a thing that's worth playing with there too. And, uh, yeah, I think that basically covers everything there is. Oh yeah. I, so to test this thing out, actually, yeah, let's power this amp up since I haven't. Oh, look at that. See, it's oscillating. Oh, well, it was just when I touched the battery. I guess that's uh, when I powered it up. I don't know. That's uh, anyways. Okay, so when I was testing this thing, I made this little cable. It's one of these aux cables, and it's got a 10K resistor to a little piece of wire loop. And so that allows me to create from my smartphone a little, uh, a little signal, and we can just test the sensitivity of this thing. So this is the piezo here, and it's meant to be an earpiece. So uh, I'll hold it close to the to the phone. 
but I'm going to feed this with the, with the tone here. And so this is nearby. I didn't actually tune this. It's uh, 2220. It's pretty close. And this is as quiet as my phone goes. So it's probably tens, a few tens of millivolts to one turn through a 10K. I see it's driving into saturation. I don't think this is coupled to the camera very well, but if it was, you, you can hear it out here. It's still, uh, it's, you know. So anyways, that's gives you a, an idea of the kind of test you can do to see if you're in the right ballpark of sensitivity. And um, yeah, so anywhere around it, it's not, you know, it's, it's not, uh, depends on how you're outputting it, right? I've gone to, USB sound cards and you don't need that kind of output depending on what what you're uh, what you're doing so that's that and um, yeah I don't know I guess uh, I don't know I, I had a, I had an idea I have this uh, piece of annealed iron here and um, I think I can make like a you can see, you can hear it Let's see. You can hear me change this inductance. And shift that resonance. And it's, it doesn't go that far because it's root, root LC dependence. But uh, actually, I got an idea here. So wait. All right, that's it for now. This may not be the final word on this receiver on the channel. I just thought I would capture what I remembered while I remember it. If I think of more things, uh, I'll, I'll put it in. So best of luck to anyone embarking on their own NMR projects. And feel free to send me any questions or whatever. It's not that I know the space super well, but uh, you know, it was really rewarding to, uh, to embark on this. So, so yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.